Hello guys and welcome to another video over here on BG Girlies. I'm Hannah and I'm here to present to you all the mega tier list of all the games that I have played this year. And let me tell you, there is quite a few games to get here. Some of them, like Ark Nova, all time fame, fave. Some of them, I actually have a mountain of games that are going to be destashed. So we're going to go through and we're going to see where all of these ranks rank amongst each other. The tiers that we have is top tiers, all time fave. Next year down is it was a lot of fun. The next year down is eh, just okay. The next year down will be fine, but just not for me. And then the bottom tier is simply do not waste your money in my opinion. So let me know down below what you think of my ratings. Did I trash any of your favorite games? Sorry about it if that is the case. And do we have any of the same faves? But without further ado, we're gonna get going. So we do have some games on here that are, we more so played with children. So I feel like games like that, we're gonna start, I'm just gonna go in the order that they're on here, so it isn't in any particular order. But the first thing here is Candyland. We're gonna get straight up Candyland a fine but you know not for me type of a rating and then the next thing we have is Forbidden Jungle this one I have mixed feelings on because it is so 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 pretty and I do love a co-op game but the thing is, is granted we did play it on easy mode but the literal first time we played this game we beat it so I feel like it makes it, I can't be like, oh my god, this is so great, because like, we beat it on the first try, and you'll see when we get to Forbidden Desert, that is still not the case, still have not beaten it, so I think because of that, Forbidden Jungle has to go at, eh, just okay. Here to Slay is um, my personal favorite of all of the Unstable games, we are big Unstable fans, for the most part, up in this household, in, in this YouTube channel and so Here to Slay is a really fun like battle -y type of game and it's not an all time fave but I will put it at like so fun. It is fairly inexpensive, fairly easy to find online or in person and it's always a great time. We also played Horrified Universal Monsters as you can see down here. I do have the whole collection. I've not yet broken into the Greek monsters yet and I have not introduced the group to the American monsters but we did play the Universal Monsters and this is one that I think I'm gonna also put under so fun. I feel like I'm a very it's very hard to wow me so I have a feeling my all-time faves is gonna be quite a small list but yeah, we'll see. Turf Wars. Speaking of though, Turf Wars is one that I think is really up there. It is such a small box, easy to bring like on a trip. Very cute. I love the concept. In this game, you're using different cards and buying different items to basically like have the best lawn to sway all of your neighbors into like basically being your pals. But at the same time, while your opponents are at work, you get to basically play pranks on them, which I think is such a funny con concept. I can't really think of anything to fault this game, so I'm going to put Turf Wars under all-time fave. Next up, we have Trash Pandas, which is, I would say, in the realm of a party game. It's like a fun little card game. It is, to me, I have a feeling it's not very expensive, but it's going to go in the eh, just okay. Wouldn't probably pick to play it. Um, Viticulture. This one is one that I can guarantee you you're all going to disagree with me on. I do not like this game. I don't think it is fun. I think part of it for me is like I've never gotten good cards. Like anytime I play this game, all the wine cards that I get need like 87 things and are all like the rosé wine and it just becomes impossible. But I don't know. There's just something about this game because it has so many mechanisms that are things that I like. I love the little like droplet pieces that look like the stuff you would put in like an aquarium. They're so fun, but I just really don't like this game, so I'm putting it down at fine, but not for me. Next is going to be our first Don't Waste Your Money, and this is the Catan Dice game, or Catan. I did learn that it is Catan. Catan, Settlers of Catan, the Instagram, did confirm with us that it's Catan. So, the Catan Dice game, I don't like it. I thought it was corny, I was not a fan, and I'm telling you, do not waste your money on that one. 
bada bing bada boom next we have on tour paris and new york i've only played the new york side i do think that this game is really nice it goes up to seven players um it's like a whiteboard flip and write type of game however all of the boys in the group thought it was really really hard and yeah so i'm gonna put it at like eh, it's just okay like i think if you're really into the theme and you love like a flip and write and like really strategic it's one of those things where you kind of have to like guess where it will fit best and the boys did not really like that but i am going to put this at an eh, just okay next is five minute dungeon this is one that we have had an absolute blast playing tony one of our game group pals introduced us to this game and it is a straight banger love it every time we've played it we all get very involved we end up standing up yelling it's just so much fun so i'm definitely gonna put that under so fun next up we have fog of love i've only played one session of this game i really enjoyed it i know that andrea wasn't obsessed so i might have to see if chris will play more of it with me i personally really liked it but i grew up playing like the sims was one of my favorite games ever and like the game of life was one of my favorite games as a kid and i think all of those things kind of lean into this game and i think it's funny that you're playing like this fictional couple so i am gonna put fog of love under so fun i really enjoyed it casting shadows on the other hand was a new release by unstable this past year and i did not really i don't really remember it if i'm being honest with you but if i if it didn't leave enough of an impression for me to remember it then i don't think it can get anything higher than a fine but not for me so i think that's what i'm gonna get from it because i don't feel like i was like repulsed by the game it was be absolutely beautiful the art was stunning but it was just like whatever herd mentality has quickly 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 become like one of our groups and definitely my favorite party game um we call party games our appetizer games or our dessert games we'll either play a party game while we're eating dinner usually for game night like andrea makes dinner and i make dessert or vice versa and usually during that time we'll play a party game and this one is one that nobody's ever like eh, about playing we all really 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 enjoy it and i think i'm gonna put it in so fun i did recently get to the for christmas the musical and movies and then the like extra cards expansion i'm very excited about that next we have it's over here the avatar of the last airbender crossroads of destiny i don't feel like i can really super fairly judge this one because we have only played um one session of it and it was like the training session kind of but i can see the potential of this game being really really fun the way it's set up gave me like the same energy as jaws of the lion where it's like a flip book and such i'm gonna put it under so fun because i think that's genuinely where it will land for me next is the uzzle which is a kind of like a party game or like a family game and i do one thing i love about this game is it's very like color dependent but it has special rules for colorblind people for children for differently abled people and i think that that is super awesome however it's not really a game i would personally pick to play we played at the hardest level and we're very easily able to do it so i'm gonna put it as fine just not for me fun facts is another banger of a party game we really really like that one we actually have not played it in a while some of the cards though are kind of like not the best and at this time of filming this to my knowledge there is no expansions which not really obsessed with that and so i'm gonna put this under so fun though okay next up is the my city roll and build my city the traditional game which we will get to it is on here was the first campaign we ever did and it like just it truly has the heart of all of us involved besides tony he wasn't there when we played it it was before he became a part of our game group but my city roll and build is definitely a blast it's one that i'm gonna have to have to have to put into so fun really really enjoy it one deck dungeon oh my oh my is this game hard andrea brought it on our at the time of filming this most recent disney trip back in october and we played it a couple of times and it took us like hours to even figure out what was going on it is so tricky it is such a good bang for your buck so hard definitely fun once you figure out what you're doing i'm having a difficulty in under putting it under so fun and just okay I think I have enough positive feelings to put it under so fun. Also, I know I'm putting a lot of things under so fun, but like, honestly, that's what you hope for. 
when you're spending money on games and playing them. It's time for a little Diet Coke break, baby. Fun fact about me, I'm obsessed with Diet Coke and I have a Diet Coke bottle tattooed on my leg. Next up is Chippendale Christmas Treasure. This is a like, um, kind of like a matching game. It's definitely for kids. And in any other situation, it would definitely go under fine, but not for me. But it is a combo of Christmas and Disney, which are two of my most favorite things in the entire world. So because of that, it'll go into eh, just okay. Next, we have Seven Wonders Duel, which I'm not like obsessed with Seven Wonders. I think it is a fine game. Again, we will get to it. I do think Seven Wonders Duel is a decent two-player game. I don't own it though and Andrea owns it. I have borrowed it once because Chris wanted to try it and he really liked it but I don't have any like pull to purchase it for myself so I think because of that it's gonna go under just okay. Next we have Stella Dixit. It's right here. It is absolutely stunning, wonderful, beautiful. However, I don't love the gameplay of it. I think that the gameplay of regular Dixit and like Disney Dixit is a lot more fun than Stella but it is really beautiful and the beauty of it is a reason that it is staying on my shelf and it's a very easy game. I feel like Andrea's collection has a lot less party games and like simpler games because for the most part if she's playing games she's playing them with me, Chris, Nick, or Tony and we are all capable of any type of game whereas for me I have a lot of friends and family that come to visit from out of town like my friend Kieran, my sister, my dad. Uh, my friend Liz, just a bunch of different people in my life who aren't super into games, but like, as in like they don't want to play like a super heavy game, so having lighter games like Stella on my shelf is useful in situations like that. But I'm going to put it under, eh, just okay. I think Truffle Shuffle is going to follow suit with Stella. It is very cute. I love the theme. I love me some candy. I love me some chocolate. I love me some sweets. However, um, we played it one time and have never brought it back to the table. So, because of that, she's gonna earn a place in it, just okay. Next is priorities, and I feel very similar to priorities as I do to fun facts. It is absolutely wonderful. Priorities is an absolutely wonderful game, and we have so much fun with it, but we've cycled through the cards too many times at this point that it's almost no longer fun because we already know where everybody ranks everything. So this is a game that I think would greatly benefit from expansions, and I feel like they will eventually come out with them. And whenever that happens, I will be thrilled. I will be at the store picking them up. So we're going to put priorities under so fun. Next is the Tea Dragon Society. And this game was awful. It is immediately going under Don't Waste Your Money. Andrea got that game. We played it. She played it one time and she was like, oh my god, you have to play this game to see how bad it is before I get rid of it. And yeah, it was not fun. I do not recommend it. Very, very boring. Next, we have Tic Tac KO Dragons versus Unicorns. This is another one that's going to go under eh, just okay because I have played it multiple times. Andrea has the cute versus evil version, which I think, yeah, it's coming up right here. We'll just pop them both here and we'll go over them at the same time because they're essentially the same game where you're kind of playing Tic Tac Toe with cards and sabotaging each other. It is quite fun. I do think that the play mats are very janky and cheap. However, the game is very inexpensive, but... I just think a little thicker of paper would have been nice. Next is another all-time fave that came out of this year. And that is... I don't even know where she went on my shelves. Uh, where is that game? Oh, I don't know if you can see it right here. My Disney shelf. Is Disney's Animated by Funko. This game, typically I... I get quite upset when games don't go up to five players, five to six, because our game group is five to six players. But this is a four player game that I have loved so much this year. It has to go all the way up to all time fave. This is a co-op game. We as a game group love co-op. And I think the more I think about it, I think one of the reasons we're really big into co-op is because we have a couple of people, Tony and Chris, who get very um, wrapped up in paralysis and analysis paralysis. And with a co-op game, there's less just sitting around like, oh my god, when's it my turn? Because you're working together. So, that will go there. Next, we have Maui. This was another game that I think the theme is very cute. It is very pretty, but it is very, very boring. I'm going to toss this one again under Don't Waste Your Money. I think we played it one time, and that also then immediately went into Andrea's D-stash pile. It's just like fine you know 
Next we have Super Mega Lucky Box, which is like a take on playing bingo, which is pretty fun. Um, I do really enjoy it. It's a, it's a nice party game. However, I don't think I would pick it. I don't put it on the same level as Herd Mentality, Fun Facts, and Priorities. So I think I'm going to put this one, Super Mega Lucky Box, under just okay. Next we have Wizard Kitten, the card game. This one I feel kind of bad judging because we've only played it one time at two player and it is a game that seems as though it will operate better at a higher player count and Andrea has since gotten the expansion. So because of that it's hard to really say but at the moment I'm putting it under fine but not for me and some may argue that the theme is really cute. I do like the wizardy theme but I do not like cats so there's that. Next we have Dungeon Mayhem. I personally for Christmas from Andrea received the Marvel version which I'm very excited to play but Dungeon Mayhem is a straight banger. It's going right into so fun. This game is easy to play on an airplane, on a train, wherever. I taught my sister and her girlfriend how to play this game and they are very much so like strictly in the party game realm of life. So the fact that like they were playing it, they want to get their own copy. Awesome. Loved that. Next is dice throne and it is the pyromancer and the shadow thief and this one has to go right to all-time fave pyromancer is my favorite character to play as um most of the two pack boxes me and andrea well andrea mainly because they're hers and i care less about who i play like she does picks who she wants to be and i pick the other also this is gonna be really helpful for the um end of the year favorite games because i'm gonna really be able to see where i rank everything but um she likes to play as a shadow thief so i get the pyromancer and it is literally like my absolute favorite character to play as if you're gonna pick up one two bot like a two one of the two player boxes that one there's three that i would suggest and that is one of them next we have seven wonders which is a classic and i know a lot of people really like this game and i do like that it goes up to seven players it's very easy and quick but it's just going under the end it's okay like i'm never upset to play it but i would never pick to play it and that's kind of how i feel about the eh just okay the fine but not for me is more like i'd be kind of like annoyed about playing it but like whatever not, like annoyed but i'd be like Ugh, this game next we have head trip from cards against humanity I was really excited about this game and it was quite a letdown. I do want to try playing it with more party game focused people like my sister. But based on the first play, I would definitely probably put it under um, fine, but not for me. I think this is a game that's probably better played when you're under the influence of something. And as somebody who does not drink or partake in any of that type of stuff, it just like wasn't hitting for me. So next is the Barbarian and the Moon Elf. I do not like playing as the Barbarian, so this one's going under um, fine, but not for me. I would never, ever, ever, ever pick to be the Barbarian. I do not think he is fun, so that's going down there. Next we have Chomp, and this one's in my pile of games I'm getting rid of, so I'm going to put it in the Don't Waste Your Money. It gives a similar vibe to Namilia, which is down here. Namilia is a great game and Chomp kind of game like gave like a lesser version of that game. So for that, it's down there. Scythe is another big hitter Stonemaier game and I do not like it. So it is going under fine, but not for me. I feel like this game is a lot of sitting around waiting for your turn and I don't like the theme. I don't know, there's just, I do not like it. I don't really have like a huge explanation as to why, but just not a fan. Far Shore by Starlight. Is that who does this? It's the same as Everdow. I don't want to say the wrong people. They're very nice people. Starling Games. There we go. Um, I'm going to put Far Shore under eh, just okay because I personally like Everdell better. And they are quite similar. So I'm going to put Far Shore under just okay. I do like the little characters. I play as the crab and I think he's so cute and the little boat is fun as well. Tenpenny Parks is another game that is in my bye bye pile, which is kind of sad because when I went on my first trip to Tanuki, which is our friendly local game store, that was one of the games I was most excited about and I found it and I was hyped and it just kind of fell flat. It's very, very easy, but like not a fun easy. It's a, is there, am I doing something wrong? This is too easy type of thing. So there's that. Um, well, we've played better like amusement park building games. So that's just where it kind of has to land. Next is Caper by Keystone Keymaster. My bad. It's going to go under fine, but not for me. We played one time and I just really haven't 
had much of a draw to play it again. Next is going to be Nuck Tax, Tats, which is a fun party game. I'm going to put this one under it just okay because, again, I don't rate it as high as, like, Herd Mentality, Fun Facts, and Priorities, but I do still enjoy it, so it's just going to go kind of in the middle. Next is Villainous Star Wars. I don't know why this one is so much more tricky than any of the Disney ones. So this one I'm going to actually put under Don't Waste Your Money. I don't think I would ever pick to play it. I think I would be unhappy if somebody asked me to play it. The last time we did play it, we didn't even finish it. And there was that. Um, the Game of Nasty Things. I do remember, I don't really remember this one. So I'm going to put it as a fine, just not for me. Um, yeah. Mm, yeah, I don't really remember it. So it's going to have to go there. That's all I gotta say about it. Next is Sagrada. That's another one that's gonna go under fine, but not for me. It's very pretty, but like I didn't like I played it one time and again I was just like it's going. I'm possibly rehoming it to um, our friend Amanda, but for the time being it's in my bye bye pile. So there's that. Next is Crew Mission Deep Sea. Hated this. Putting it under. Don't waste your money. We played it one time and don't ever want to play it again. Point City, that is a one that's going to also go here, um, going between fi fine, not for me, and don't waste your money. I'm going to go here, I won the game, so it's that, it reminded me less of Point Salad and more like, um, Splendor, and Splendor's another game that like, I'm like weirdly good at, but like, I don't really like it, I just always win. So it's going to go there. It was kind of a disappointment from all of us. I did play the Pearlbrook expansion for Everdell, and I did like what the expansion did. So I'm going to put that under So Fun. Happy Little Dinosaur. I absolutely disliked this game, so that's going to go in the Do Not Waste Your Money. I did not think it was fun. It was just, like, not the vibes. The Mole is a fun party game. It's by the same people who do priorities. I'm going to pop that under So Fun. That's another one that we all really enjoy when we play it. Next, we have Cover Your Assets. This is another Don't Waste Your Money game. Didn't like it. It's already been de-stashed. And yeah, there is that. Next, we have Heat, which I'm going to put under Fine, but not for me, which I know is going to be really controversial. Hold on. I know it's going to be quite controversial to put Heat under Fine, but not for me, because everybody loves this game. I don't know if it's still hard to get your hands on, but it was really hard to get your hands on for a while, and I just don't really like it. I don't like the theme. I do not really love Push Your Luck. And yeah, I just, it wasn't for me, babes. Sorry if you love that one. Next, Mickey Mouse Food Fight, all-time fave. Love that game. It's a dexterity game where basically you start out depending on how many players you have, and it goes up to five. You have like a little tray. And I also did get the, um, I don't think I said, no, you can't, a Harry Potter reskin of the game and um you basically have this tray of like pieces of like thick cardboard food and everybody has three dice and one of them has like a direction left right or center or anywhere one of them has a food the, the different foods and one of them has numbers and you roll the three dice and there'll be like three hamburgers to the left and you'll throw them at that person onto their tray and whoever finishes their tray first is done and they get a ribbon and the first to three ribbons wins love it Next we have kites. I absolutely hated that game. I hate the timers. Stressed me out. Gave me heart palpitations. I gave me flashbacks to playing Perfection as a child. No. Don't like it. Next I played this card game called the Grimwood and it was like okay. I would never pick to play it so it's gonna go under fine but not for me. I don't even remember it honestly. Next is Namilia. Namilia is gonna go under so fun in Namilia. You have all these different cards and you're layering them and covering them and trying to complete different objectives and like some rounds objectives a and b are being scored some objectives b and d are being scored there's all different combos you can have and it is such a great one next we have welcome to i'm gonna pop out welcome to under so fun i think this is another really fun game that works great with all types of people and like gaming levels um i'm always happy to bring that one to the table Next we have Wonderwoods. This is another Don't Waste Your Money, one that we played one time and got rid of. It's like a mushroom collecting game. It was not very good. I do not recommend that, if I'm being honest with you. The Caruso Crew. This is an incredible game. I think it's by Van Ryder Games. 
Andrea got it at Gen Con at the Final Girl booth, so I think it's Van Ryder, and it is so fun. I have learned this year that I'm absolutely obsessed with like choose your own adventure puzzly type games. And in this game, it's like you have every, it's a four player game, again, wish it went up to five, but you each have like a booklet and you're going on different adventures, collecting rubies and pearls and coins. And depending on which character you have, there are different things you can do. Like on your page, say you're looking at like a library carved like in the wood will be like different numbers and depending on which character it is you'll see different numbers then you go to that page and it's just a great time next we have mind trip did i even keep this mind space i did keep this game so i can't say that it's horrible but i am gonna put it under it's just okay i actually really enjoyed the game however the markers that came with this game were absolutely horrendous and they don't wipe off somebody gave me a suggestion on what to use to wipe them off now i don't remember but like if you were that person on instagram please 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 let me down know down below but like we soaked them in like windex and in cleaning product and whatever trying to get the get it off and it just like simply wasn't um betrayal house in the hills third edition this has been an all-time fave this year we've played this game so 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 many times it is a go-to when we have more than five people at the game night really enjoyed it i don't really have any bad thing to say about it other than I, I mean i don't love like a spooky theme but like love the game fox in the forest straight under don't waste your money we tried to play it. we didn't even get through the game because we hated it so much um yeah it's just like not the vibes for me and we've learned that we do not like trick taking games so straight to the bottom it goes next is my little everdell i'm gonna put this under so fun i think my little everdell is an absolute banger for a kids game it is so fun even for adults and i can't wait for andrea's son bennett to be old enough to play it he could probably play it i feel like he's smart enough love it next is junk drawer which is a super fun puzzly game that we tried in the bgg hot games room at gen con and then ended up andrea ended up picking it up um i think i'm gonna put it under just okay i mean it is so eh, i'm gonna put it under so fun i'd be thrilled to play it next we have the game of life walt disney world parks edition the game of life sucks man like it's just not fun so down there it goes next we have um Catan, like rival the like two player Catan. Catan. i'm so bad at this two player Catan. it's fine not for me i'm not a big Catan person in general the two player game was fine i think i played it once or twice when it picked to play it again next we have disney's sorcerer's arena this is another one that is just like okay like it didn't leave that great of an impression on me i wouldn't really care to play it again but like i didn't hate it same with dog park it is a fun one to play with three or more people but playing it two people is absolutely awful it should not even be marketed as a two-player possible game the like um little what's the doodad that you have to play as sucks and the thing is it's only good at like three or more players but it only goes up to four so because of that it's just okay wrong party did not like this game it's going straight under do not waste your money it is boring it is just not the vibes i feel the exact same way about dumb ways to die i did not like this game at all i literally lost in once i didn't even i don't even think i got to my turn i just died so yeah it's just like simply a no forest shuffle i've played over 500 games of forest shuffle on bga feel free to add me my name is bg girly hannah with an h at the end and yeah if you want to play forest shuffle let a girl know next is the adventures of robin hood which is a campaign game that me and andre have played we've only done a couple of sessions of it but it is so fun and i cannot wait to get back to it you have like it kind of reminds me of like a flap book that like a kid would have it has these little puzzle pieces that you take out and you flip over and then you flip them back and it's overall a great time next is i found it disney card game it's like a kid's game it's gonna go under fine but not for me when i pick to play it of all of these kids games the one i would pick is my little everdell a little bit too big for the screen here next we have dice throne oh this is like the cursed pirate one i do not like this one at all so i'm gonna put this one under do not waste your money i hate play i've never played as the other character but i hate playing as the cursed pirate it's one of my least favorite cards against humanity the golden box edition hold it cards against humanity is just like a classic party game it's fun you know it's raunchy it's fun and when the cards are shiny and gold like say less 
Next we have Horticulture, which I really, really enjoyed this game when we played this. This is another one we played on vacation. Oh my god. Horticulture, move up here to So Fun. Big fan, really enjoyed it. Would recommend. Next we have um, Betrayal at Baldur's Gate. This is like ba Betrayal, but D&D &D themed. It's all the way up to the top. It was so fun. We've played it twice now. It's been an absolute blast both times. Risk Strike. I did not like this game. I do not like the game Risk, so it's going straight down there. It was like whatever. I would never pick to play it. Off Topic is another like okay party game. Wouldn't pick it again over the other party games that I have under So Fun. Those are the ones I would recommend over Off Topic. Next we have the Great American Mail Race game. This is one that I thought about destashing, but I ended up keeping because I think that it will be good for when I have like less experienced gamers playing games with me. So for that I'm going to put it under if it's just okay. I think the theme is really cute of delivering mail. It's just a little bit easy. Next we have Patchwork Valentine. It's fine. Not for me. I wouldn't pick it up, but I would be like whatever about playing it. Azul Queen's Garden. I'm giving her eh, just okay. Of all of the Azuls that I have played, that one is my least favorite because my little pea brain just can't keep things straight, okay? Somehow I can play heavy games, but then Azul Queen's Garden, she gets me good. Next is Alice's Garden. That's another one that's okay. It's another tile placement game. Andrea loves tile placement games, so we've played a lot of them. But out of all the tile placement games, I don't think this is one that I would be like running to go play again. Next we have Disney Dixit. This was so, so, so fun. Loved it. The art in this game, like I want, like do they sell prints of the cards? Because some of them are so pretty. There's this one with Steamboat Willie on it. I want it so bad. It's so good. Next is Dice Veggies. And honestly, I really liked that game. However, Andrea got it at Gen Con and all of the yellow dice, the like brown dots in them, like all are falling out, which is really bizarre. But I think it is so fun. It's a fun concept where you're like chopping the dice out. I actually want to play that one again soon. Um, Draftosaurus, I did not like this game. I would not recommend it. You're like drafting dinosaurs into like your dinosaur zoo. We played it like one time and I just like, not for me. As well, Master Chocolatier, I think that one is so fun. I do really enjoy it. I love the chocolatey theme and I just think it's a great time. As well, it's like a classic and it's one of the classics that I quite enjoy. Um, Verdant, this one I'm gonna put under It's Okay. I did like it when we played it, but it's not one that like I've literally, I had to be like, oh yeah, I forgot about that game when I just looked at it. So I don't think it can go under so fun if it's not even something I really remember that well. So there's that. Rival Restaurants, we'll put that under so fun. Rival Restaurants is kind of like a bidding game where you each have your own restaurant and you're going to, in like a trading game, bargaining, what's the, I don't know, I'm horrible at the terms. But you're like going to different like markets and you all have different effects and you're making different food. It's quite fun and you're trying to have the best restaurant. Next is Dungeons Dice and Danger and I feel like this has to make its way to the top because it's one of my most played games this year because it's the game that we play the most while we travel. So it'll go straight to the top. It is a roll and write game where you're dungeon crawling, defeating monsters, and having a great time. Next we have the Jurassic Park T-Rex unmatched game um i'll put it under okay no i'll put it under so fun it was quite a bit of fun um i would play it again it makes me excited to try other unmatched games that are themes that i like andre likes jurassic park it's her game she had me play as the t-rex though in the miniature so funny because it's literally the opposite of miniature it's huge next we have get on board london and paris i think but it was okay. It was one of I considered ditching but kept because I think it will be a good one to play with like less experienced gamers. It's a roll and write. It gives like similar vibes to Welcome To but I like Welcome To better. Happy City. This game is like a surprise banger. I think this game is so fun for like a quick fun game. I don't like that it only goes to four player. If it went to five I might put it as an all time fave because then we could play it as a whole game group as like an appetizer game but because we can't it's just gonna go under so fun um agricola this game is really tricky but i really love it um who are these games by it's like the lookout games i love lookout games they're one of my favorite publishers i have so much good luck with their games agricola is super fun super tricky and like i mean this in like the best way possible it is not cute and if 
I'm very much judge a book by the cover and the fact that a game that is like visually ugly is out under my so fun could be an all-time fave is because the game is actually that good and at the end of the day that's what matters in Agricola so good Arc Nova is my most played well my most played physical game of the year and she absolutely is going up to the tippy tippy top of all-time fave my friend made me the sweater that says I want to cry but I have Arc Nova to play and I love her Artisans of Splendent Val also can go up to all-time fave I'm playing as Javi we've only done like I think two or three sessions but absolutely love it again dislike that it only goes up to four players but it is so pretty um this is like a reskin of the cover your assets it's called cover your cookies and it's like a collab with um crumble didn't like it who are you mm, what is this dice throne i think this is the samurai and the gunslinger it's like okay it's not one that i'm like obsessed with honestly Lorcana, don't waste your money. I wasted mine. I don't like the game. I think the game is not fun and a waste of money and a waste of time. And I just have learned that like TCGs are super not for me, but Lorcana more so than Pokemon. Like Pokemon I'm, uh, will probably rank higher. And I love Disney, but I don't like Lorcana. Like playing that game, you know, like four turns ahead that it's impossible for you to win. So you're just like sitting there and I'm like, okay, wait, can we just quit? Because like it's impossible for me to win. So I do not like it. Next is Distilled. This game is an absolute banger. It's one that I liked so much I got my own copy of. Well, I asked for it for Christmas and was gifted it, which is super duper exciting. It's way up on the top shelf, but I love this game. And it's another one where I absolutely hate the theme. I don't drink, so like making spirits isn't something I'm super hype about, but this game is so fun. It, it, it does go up to five player. However, it is better at two player. Otherwise, it isn't very, very long. It is a 30 minute per player game. So if you're playing it with five players, you're there for well over two hours. Cascadia is definitely under so fun. It's a classic. Um, Andrea did get the Landmarks expansion, and I do want to play that soon. I was thinking about that recently. Very, very fun. Um, Queen by Midnight is a definite fave of the year. This game is an absolute banger. Both times we've played it, we all had a wonderful time. It like just holds a special place in my heart. Absolutely love her. Azul Summer Pavilion is so fun. I really liked that one. That's actually probably my favorite Azul is the Summer Pavilion. It's like in between. Well, Azul Chocolatier is like just a reskin of regular Azul. But um, Azul Summer Pavilion feels like it's in between Queen's Garden and regular Azul. It's more tricky than regular Azul, but not as like brain hurdy as Queen's Garden. So I do really, really enjoy that. And it's really pretty. Tapple, I hated that game. I thought it was really dumb didn't like it wouldn't get it I think Andrea's de-stashing it no exploding kittens the two-player game also hated that game so that's gonna go down there as well um pack and stuff is gonna go up here it's like same vibes as patchwork it's like fine but I wouldn't pick it um the original dice throne marvel set this one can go under so fun I don't play as any of those characters but mm, I'll put this one under okay because I don't really like playing as any of those characters and basically we're going by if I was telling you to buy one would I pick that one and the answer is no so next we have final girl this is one that we play tested at gen con honestly I was really I got really sick at gen con I don't know what happened but I think I got like a cold <laughs> and then I was really trying to push it and like we had like D&D &D, and I was forcing myself to talk even though I had lost my voice and I was not doing well when we were learning Final Girl, but the vibes of it, not for me. I wouldn't pick to get it even after learning how to play. Next we have Forbidden Desert, and I definitely like this so much more than Forbidden. Jungle, it's going under so fun. We've played it multiple times now and have not beaten it, which is something I like. We all feel that way where it's like if we beat it on the first try, we're like, okay, now what? So because we still haven't even beaten that one, it's going to go under so fun. Next is Kabuto Sumo. I did not like this game at all. I've only played it at four people though and Andre said it is much better at two people so maybe I'll give it another try but also I don't really like have any like want to give it another try so there's that 
We have the OG Villainous. I'll put that under so fun. I do think Villainous is fun. It's not one we bring to the table that often because I feel like that game gives Andrea a headache, but I enjoy it. And I have all the expansions besides the Oogie Boogie one because I literally hate Nightmare Before Christmas, so I wasn't going to buy it for just the one. Next, we have Unstable Unicorns. Again, so fun. It's one of our go-to party games or appetizers, as we call it. Everdell, same category. Absolutely love Everdell it's a great game the tree is so beautiful the cards are beautiful we have the marvel dice throne captain marvel and black panther that one's okay i don't pick to play either of those um i don't even i've played as both i don't like either if that makes sense um Catan, it's like okay the game is very very long and like very long in the sense that you're just sitting there like is it my turn yet so there's that joking hazards absolutely hated this game it was like zero percent funny do not recommend um never have i ever you know did not like that bye bye to the end of the pile for that one next we have black widow and dr strange black widow is my second favorite character to play so i'm gonna put this one up here in the tippy tippy top of all that time fave she and pyromancer are my two favorite characters so we love to see it Next is Trails. I do think Trails is quite fun. Haven't played Trails in a while, but I do own it and would love to get it to the table again. Isle of Cats. I am shockingly going to put it under so fun because I absolutely hate cats and the cats in this game are scary looking. But the game itself is really, really fun. We've played it as the whole group. We've played it at two player. It slaps no matter how many players you have. So there's that. Next is Hurry Up Chicken Butt, which is a kids game by the makers of um, Exploding Kittens, and it is so fun. We played it with Bennett. We, he like, in, I feel like it's a real like testament to the game that like the kid is like, let's play again, let's play again, because there's plenty of kids games we've played with Andrea's kids where like we don't even make it through the game, and he loved it. It was so cute, like how excited he was getting playing it, and we're like, we should kind of play this with like the game group. Like it's so funny. You have like different prompts you pick for and then you like shake this chicken and then whatever color it is you have to do that and then you it's kind of like hot potato super cute highly recommend splendor it is fine not for me however i've never lost but i don't like the game the tokens that it comes with are very luxe though so i do like that but like not the vibes um pokemon tcg i'm gonna put it under eh just okay I love Pokemon. I've got a huge Pikachu tattoo on my leg, but I'm more of like the Pokemon video games rather than Pokemon TCG type of girl or like I like the anime. But the actual card game, I'm just like not loving. Gloomhaven, Jaws of the Lion. I've only played one session of it, so I'm going to put it under just okay for now. And hopefully me and Chris are able to like maybe complete it this year and then I'll have a better like judge on it in the new year of next year chameleon did not like this game at all it reminded me of like a worse version of the mole wouldn't pick it up above and below i really really like this i'm putting this up at under all-time fave i think it is a very 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 fun game i do wish it was a little bit longer i think it's seven rounds i wish it was like 10 rounds maybe because i feel like by the time i have money to do stuff the game is over but i absolutely love that one Next is Planted. I'm going to give that just okay. I almost got rid of it, but again, kept it for the simple fact that it is simple. Revolver Noir, Don't Waste Your Money it is a button shy game. We, neither of us liked it at all. Um, next is Ingenious. I'm going to put this under, um, okay. It's not like a favorite of mine. It's another tile placement-y type of game with like very clinky tiles. Um, it's fun, but I, we played it one time and nobody has like asked to play it again earth don't waste your money this game is awful this game was hyped up i swear to god everybody was paid to say it was good that's how i feel simply because it was not it was corny it was so easy like every single card in my forest would be maxed out on trees it was just not fun i did not like that game andre is very sad that she made wasted the dollars on it Flamecraft is another one that I'm gonna put under it's okay it's another one that I don't own if I had it I would keep it to play with people who are not very good at board games but again I feel like the game would be better if each individual dragon did its own thing and I know Andrea said that she had read somewhere that the developers did play test it that way but it became too confusing and so I think they wanted the game to be easier 
So that's why they did that, which I can understand it. It is very cute, but I like things to be a bit more tricky. Um, the Lost Ruins of Arnak. Love this game. It is so fun, and I hate that's another one. I hate the theme. I don't care about Indiana Jones, but that game is so good, so fun, but I do wish it went up to five players. If it did, it would probably be under top faves, but because it doesn't, we don't get to play it very often. Next is Mariposa. So I'm going to put this under Don't Waste Your Money. It's in my pile of D-Stash. It's quite boring. It's pretty, but boring. Um, my Little Pony Adventures in Equestria. Again, this is going to go up under So Fun. It's another one that I think could go under all-time fave if it went up to five player, but it doesn't. My City, which is the first campaign we completed. It's going to go under all-time fave of the year. It is such a banger. Absolutely love that one. Azul Mini. Um, it's going to go under So Fun. I do love that Azul Mini comes with like little plastic like overlays for the board so the tiles click in and they can't slide all over obsession by ooh, i forget the name kayenta i love obsession uh i have the where is she she's down here i have the upstairs downstairs expansion i haven't played that yet but i'm dying to absolutely love obsession outrun the bear i don't like this game but everybody else in the game group did i'm gonna say it's fine it's just not for me not a vibe um terraforming mars this is gonna go all the way up to all-time fave it is a game again that we like better at two players so i did get my own copy for christmas i'm very excited for that santa's workshop is gonna go under so fun it is a resource collection um worker placement game where you're like building toys for santa that, that's just such a fun vibe we played the older version i know there is a new version which andrea did get but we have not played the new one yet next is bargain quest uh all of us besides andrea really liked that game i she will probably put it under fine but um i really enjoyed bargain quest i have it i would love the expansions had a great time with it it's quite light but very fun next is cartographers i'm gonna put in it was fine not for me We've only played it one time, and we were like, this game desperately needs colored pencils, and then we've never played it again. So, that's where that one's going to land. Next is Wingspan, and Wingspan is so fun. It's a classic. I hate birds, but it's a fun game. You, you, we all know that one. We've got Point Salad. It is okay. I would never pick to play it. I don't own it, but like, if somebody wants to play it, it's a good time filler. Parks is super fun. Really enjoy that one. The art in this game is absolutely beautiful. You're like playing, visiting national parks, collecting resources so you can visit them. It's a great time. Taverns of Tiefenthal. This is going to go under all time fave. Absolutely love it. I do have the expansion, oh, the open doors. And what's so funny about this one is when I first bought it, I accidentally bought the expansion and then had to go back in to buy the base game because I'm a ding dong. And I still haven't even played the expansion. Next was Quest Kids. I'm going to put this under just okay because this game is like $50 and it was like not $50 worth of fun for a kids game that they are going to outgrow. I feel like kids games have to be on the cheaper side because they're only, they're, it's not like an investment that they're going to play forever. Um, Parks, the memory game, uh, fine. It was not like something I would pick to play, but the art was really beautiful and I could see maybe for kids, but no. Fun Fair. This is one that's going to go up under So Fun. is a very, very fun um, theme park themed game. Way better than Tempany Parks. And yeah, again, wish it went up to five player. Christmas Lights. Um, this one, originally I probably would have put it under eh, just okay. But now she's making her way into So Fun because we as a group had so much fun playing it. So it's going to go there. It's a weird game where you hold your cards facing away from you and you're trying to like deduct which cards you have, where they are so that you can build your like um, you have like a certain pattern of string lights you're trying to make. Next is New York Zoo. This one is like okay. Mm, actually I'm going to give it fine just for me. Like I we played it recently and I was not excited to play it. Is what it is. Princess Princess Love Letter. Again fine. Not for me. It's just like a whatever type of game holly jolly i did enjoy this one i thought it was quite a bit of fun a very cute christmas game spectrum is another like party game that i have it's by like the spectrum youtube channel i'm gonna put under so fun in this game basically you have like a board with like agree strongly agree agree slightly agree slightly disagree disagree and strongly disagree and there's different topics of conversation and you read one and then you like 
face down pick a tile of like where you land on the topic and everybody has to guess your opinion it's a good conversation starting game smash up disney do not waste your money that one is in my d-stash pile we played like half the game and it was so boring that we quit and i feel the exact same way oh we have a this is a row of bad games paint the roses again getting rid of it thought it was so easy even on hard mode so boring did not like it cryptid cafe this game was trash can not good don't recommend that was like the first awful game we played was cryptid cafe so it like whenever we like talk about games we don't like we're like like cryptid cafe it always comes back to cryptid cafe next we have splendor duo again fine but not by me i just don't really like splendor but again i always win that one too um chocolate we played this at um gen con and it's like okay don't love it dice throne santa versus krampus this is um definitely an all-time fave it's like the um third one would that would be like my suggestion if you were to only buy one Grand Austria Hotel. I'm going to put this under all-time fame. I only played it one time this year, but it was an absolute banger of a game. It was so fun. I loved Hotel. Like, I loved all, like, the Dash games as a kid, like Dino Dash, Hotel Dash, um, all of them. And it gave me, like, it felt like I was playing Hotel Dash, but, like, a, if you know what I'm talking about, let me know. But a board game. Next was Ghosts and Candy, Roll and Fright. This one was also really, really fun. Our Halloween game night was an absolute banger, and that was right up there. It was a ton of fun. Um, did I have planted on here twice? I accidentally have planted on here twice, so we're just going to ignore that. Next is Zuvetus. This one is Don't Waste Your Money. It's in my d stash pile. We played it one time, and it was not fun, and now it lives there. Next we have Beer and Bread. This one was quite fun. We've only played it once though and I'd really love to play it some more. So I could, I would probably, I could maybe even rate it higher, but we only played it once and I don't have a super strong like attachment to it. So it's gonna go under so fun. Next is Terraforming Mars, the dice game. All time fame, fave of the year. It's like playing Terraforming Mars, but without the mess. <laughs> because you guys know, the little like cubes of Terraforming Mars, wild all over the place at all times fit to print i did not like this game i'm gonna put it under fine but not for me it is too stressful games with timers typically are not my cup of tea i'm a naturally very anxious person i have anxiety and games with timers not a good fit next is fork um uh ben from cosmic ben showed us this game at gen con i'm gonna put it under okay again we're not obsessed with trick taking but it was fine in the footsteps of darwin this one's okay i kept it i believe did i did i put it over there did i hear it uh, where is it yeah it's here um i think again it's like quite easy but i think it would be fun with people who aren't so good at games um your best life by whiz kids is gonna go under so fun it's like if the game of life was actually good enjoyed that one a lot the multiple times we've played it and it's cool because you can choose to play it as either a couple or as a single person which is interesting next we have potions and spells and this is so fun we got a prototype of this game sent to us and it is a blast we thought we would like it better at a higher player count turns out we like it better at two player but regardless it's a great one roll on the range i think is a really great roll and write i'm gonna put that under so fun it's so cool because it even has like cards that you can like print and cut out that are double sided it's a great one enjoyed that a lot picky eaters i'm gonna put that under okay um i like the concept of it but i think that there's too much going on that it gets to be like messy and i don't love that next we have river or home, forever home which i think is quite fun it's better than dog park and you're like collecting dogs and taking them for walks and like trying to find them like either homes or foster homes it's like a whole thing and it's a very cute concept and i'm pretty sure all the dogs in it are like actual real dogs with like their real names next is riverside this one is also quite fun andrea the first time we played this literally could not get it together but it is a fun like roll and write game would suggest that you're playing as like a um what's the word i'm looking for you're like 
a cruise director of like a, a Alaskan cruise essentially and bringing people to excursions and stuff. Quite fun. Exo World Survival. This is another co-op game. It is really really fun. It's by Starling Games. They did send us that game. We've only played it two player and like we did really bad. We died on the easiest one but it's because we just kept forgetting about like the things we could do because there's so much going on and there's no real good video on it but we're excited to bring that to the table with the whole group. Beards and Booty was a roll and ride. I did not like it. It gave me the same energy as Dice Throne, but I would just like rather play Dice Throne. You know? Planet, again, this game was not fun. You have like this sphere with like magnets on it, and you magnet on all the different like um biomes. I don't know. It like feels like it's from 1802 um role player love 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 this game i got all the expansions for christmas as well as the adventures this is my role player cube and i can't wait to add stuff to it and i know that one of these expansions makes the game up to five player and i'm hype villainous the cruella one i'll, I'll say it's fun i like villainous disney this is rolling cook which is a um roll and write printable and it is so fun it's another one that we play every time we travel it's perfect for the airplane you literally need a pencil the paper and three dice next is castles of burgundy castles of burgundy i'm like between so fun and it's just okay like i like it but like i'm not excited to play it like it's not one that i'm like ooh, let's get this to the table right now but i think that's because we've only ever played the base game and we haven't played any of the like modules and I want it to be more tricky, but I feel like it will be. So I'm going to put it under so fun. Puerto Rico was so fun. Puerto Rico 1980, 18, whatever. I don't really know the name all the way. It's another one that was so fun. However, typically when we play a new game, me and Andrea will like, not like play test it, but like play test it. Like we'll play it on Wednesday on Girls Day to like learn all the rules so that when it comes to game night, it can run smoothly. And this is Tony's game and... So that didn't happen and it was kind of a shit show figuring it out but once we did it was a lot of fun um small world i hate that game i've only played it one time but i am keeping it because i want to try it at a bigger player count but as of right now it feels like i wasted money on it because it was not good at two player um next we have wingspan asia which is also so fun it's very nice for two player i like the addition of like the little yin yang things Sushi Go, I hate this game, um, I got rid of it a while ago, don't like it. Taco Cat, Goat Cheese Pizza, both the Christmas and the Halloween versions, so fun. We have such a good time as a group playing it, it's always so funny. Quacks, I'm not even going to pretend like I know how to say that, it's so fun. I've really enjoyed that game, I can't wait to get some of the expansions for it. I think there's more than one. Three Sisters is another one, I, I'm honestly i might put three sisters i think three sisters might be my favorite roll and right so i'm putting that at the top it's very combo-y it is so much fun really love um ticket to ride is fine it's another one like the classic game is just really aren't for me unfortunately so i'm gonna put it under it's just fine you know Tiny Towns is another fun one. We haven't played that in a while. And Andrea, it was her favorite game for the longest time. She played like a million solo games of it, bought all the expansions, and then we never played a single one of them. So we need to get those to the table. This is Jabba's Palace. It's like fine. It is not super for me. Of like the like party games we have, I would not pick it at all. Next is The Pursuit of Happiness, and this is going way up to the top. This game was so freaking fun. We, the big box, we played one game with me, Andrea, and Nick. We played it wrong for like half the game, and then we figured it out. And then me and Andrea added every single expansion right out in there and played the game, and it took up like this much room, and it was amazing. Maple Valley, um, that game was really cute. I love the graphics. I'll put it under so fun. Had a wonderful time playing it. Would love to play it again. Too Many Cooks, did not really like this one, wouldn't really suggest it. It was just like not that good if I'm being honest. And then Hughes and Clues, I'm going to put this under so fun. We played it for the first time yesterday and it was an absolute blast. So that is my tier ranking of all of the games that we have played, I have played in 2023. My all-time fave games, which are the ones I'm suggesting to you, are Ark Nova, Turf War, Animated, Dice Throne, but specifically the Pyromancer Shadow Thief version, Mickey and Friends Food Fight, Caruso Crew, 
Betrayal, House on the Hill, 3rd edition, Forest Shuffle, Betrayal at Baldur's Gate, Dungeons, Dice, and Danger, Artisans of Splendid Vale, Distilled, Queen by Midnight, Dice Throne, Black Widow, and Doctor Strange, My City, the classic game, Above and Below, Obsession, Terraforming Mars, Taverns of Tief and Tall, Dice Throne, Santa vs. Krampus, the Grand Austria Hotel, Terraforming Mars, The Dice Game, Role Player, Three Sisters, and The Pursuit of Happiness. And thank you guys so much for sticking around on this video. What do you think of my rating? Is there anything you strongly disagree on? Let me know down below. All opinions are welcome. Just be kind. And is there anything you strongly agree on? Let me know. But thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you hit subscribe and give this video a like. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.